today. Today I want to show you how to make vocal pitch correction sound natural. Hey, what's going on? Chris Lim here from Mixdown Online. Interesting topic for you today. We're going to cover pitch correction. Now, the thing with pitch correction, you can easily overdo it. You can make it sound fake. And what I want to show you today is how to make it sound natural. Okay, so I have a way to work with uh, pitch correction. So let's jump right in Cubase and check this out. So uh, first of all, in Cubase, the tool that I like to use is called Very Audio. It's a wonderful manual pitch correction tool, uh, meaning that you pitch correct manually. Uh, for me, it's the way I like to work. There's nothing wrong on using a plugin like uh, uh, Autotune, you know, which is going to automatically pitch correct a vocal and there's a time for that you know but how I like to work is to do everything manually uh, first of all is to work also with a good performance a good recorded vocal and this is very very important to get the best out of pitch correction to work with a vocal recording that is already on pitch for the most part and that feels very good and this will always give you the best results there's nothing worse than having to pitch correct a bad performance uh, a vocal recording that is all over the place as far as the pitch goes there's so much you can do with a bad performance and a bad recording like for me pitch correction is a tool to fine-tune and already good vocal recording. So in Cubase to work with very audio, what I'm gonna do is to double click on the audio I wanna work, like the vocal recording I wanna work with, and this will open the sample editor window. I'm gonna go on the left side, on the left zone in Cubase, and open the very audio tab. I'm gonna then click on edit very audio and that will create a copy of the vocal recording and that will give me a visual of the vocal recording, you know, as far as the pitch goes. So it will create a pitch segments, uh, which is gonna allow me to manually pitch correct the vocal recording. So what I'm gonna show you today will also work with other manual pitch correction tools like Melodyne, for example. Uh, okay, so now if we look on the left side, just a quick overview of the tools we have available within Very Audio. On top, I have smart controls, and this, I'm always gonna keep that to show all smart controls. Uh, by default, it will, it will go to the default smart controls, uh, but I like to have all of the controls available when I click or when I bring my my, um, my cursor straight on a segment, okay? And we'll go through uh, some of the tools uh, later on. Um, then, you know, when I select a segment, uh, I have access to correct the pitch from the left zone, uh, straighten the curve, uh, shift the format, and stuff like that. So there's some very creative uh, effects that you can make with a tool like Very Audio. Uh, but for today's video, I'm mainly gonna focus on pitch correction. Um, and then there's also the scale assistant that I don't use much, but that can be useful. Uh, for example, the song I'm gonna work on today is in E major. Uh, so I can actually select that uh, within the editor scale and I can make Very Audio to show me the scale note guides and also to snap pitch uh, while editing directly on the note that is part of the scale. So I'm not going to activate those, but they are there if you need them. Uh, so let's have a quick listen to the song we're going to work on today. You wish upon a shooting star. Okay, so let's start to pitch correcting the first line. Um, and as you can see, you know, a vocal recording is very complex as far as the pitch goes. So it's not linear, and this is not what you want anyways, you know. So there's a lot of movement as you can as you can see with vibrato. Some segments are pitchy, some others are right on the pitch. Now the thing that I always do is to use my ears before starting to work on pitch correcting. Uh, just because uh, it's not everything that I see visually uh, that will fit if I bring it to pitch. So for example, I can select all of those segments and I can pitch correct them right away by bringing the correct pitch to 100%. And this is how it's going to sound like. You wish upon a shooting star. Okay, so it's on pitch, but you know, you can actually hear some artifacts. Let's listen to it again. 
to wish upon a shooting star. Okay, the shooting star is kind of uh, fuzzy a bit, you know? So I want to try to avoid this. I'm going to bring it back, undo what I did, and go segment per segment. And this is how I like to work. Uh, and another very important thing is to make the decisions, the pitch correction decisions within the musical context. Okay, so if I listen to the full mix. You wish upon a shooting star. Yeah, and by the way, this song is already mixed. Usually when I work on pitch correction, I'm going to tend to do this before I start mixing. Even sometimes I'm going to do this while recording with the artist and me and the singer can pitch correct together. Uh, so this is also a way I like to work. And then I jump into the mixing stage. Uh, but for this video, the song has already been mixed and I used the on pitched version of the vocal for the purpose of this video. So let's listen to it again. You wish upon a shooting star. Okay, so there's uh, some segments here that I want to pitch correct that are off to my ears. Uh, so the first one right here, for example, there's a few things I can do to fix that up. You can see that the uh, there's a kind of a straight note for half of it, and then uh, the pitch goes up uh, with a kind of a, a swirl, which is okay, which is fine. So it doesn't need to always be on pitch. Because if I bring on pitch by striking up the curve, for example, it's not going to sound very natural. You wish upon a shooting star. Okay, I can hear artifacts and it's, you know, it sounds a bit robotic. I don't want that, so I'm going to bring it back to how it was. I can also, and this is something that I do a lot, to split a segment into different sections. Okay, so this way I can bring that down a bit and uh, even this one lower on pitch. I get a bit less of this world and we'll see how that sounds like. You wish upon a shooting star. It still sounds, uh, I get a bit of artifacts also. It sounds better and le way more natural, but there's still a bit of artifacts, so I'm going to bring it back to how it was. In this case, what I would do is to simply bring it down a bit, but leave the whole thing intact. You wish upon a shooting star. Okay, so that first line sounds good as it is. I'm going to keep it this way. You wish upon all right, next, uh, let me check here uh, what else I can do. Uh, there's this note here that I'm just going to bring on pitch, and same for this one. We're splitting hairs at this point, but still. You wish upon a shooting star. That wish will take it back. Okay, now something to know when you move a segment to the next higher note or lower note, it's going to pitch snap itself to that note. If you want to freely move, that segment, keep your finger on shift. This way you'll be able to move it without being snapped to the uh, the note, in case. And sometimes this is what you want. You wish upon a shooting star. Okay, so let me bring this one down a bit. You wish upon a shooting star. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, now the star uh, right here at the end. Let me check what I can do here. Star. Star. Okay, I can do the same thing. I can just split that in two, bring that down, bring that down to the note, see how that goes. Star. Okay, I think that actually works pretty well. You wish upon a shooting star. Okay, that works. On the other hand, I'm not getting that initial feel that the singer was going for. Okay, so let me just bring that note back on top, see how that sounds like. You wish upon a shooting star. Okay, now I get a bit more of a feel, you know, so there's no right or wrong answer uh, for this type of thing. It's a personal choice. So now I need to make the decision on making that note like 100% on pitch or keep that swirl just to, uh, to make it feel different, you know, so it's a personal choice at this point. You wish upon a shooting star. You wish upon a shooting star. That would okay, so let's keep it this way and move on to the next part. That wish won't take you very far. All right, so let me split that one in two. That wish won't take you very far. Wish won't that wish won't take it very far. Okay, this part right here. Okay, if I keep my anchor point in the center, I'm gonna bring that down a bit. See how that goes. That wish won't take it very. 
and bring the whole thing higher. That wish won't take it very far. That wish won't take it very far. Okay, if I bring it down here. That wish won't take it very far. Okay, I think that sounds better. And then bring that note lower. That wish won't take it very far. That wish won't take it very far. Bring this one lower. Uh, and again, you know, I'm gonna split that one in two. See how that goes. That wish won't take it very far. Okay, that sounds pretty good. That wish won't take it very far. And if I bring this one down. That wish won't take it very far. Even better. That wish won't take it very far. Okay, so this is the kind of stuff that I like to do. I tend to keep the uh, vibrato as it is. And this is a case by case thing. Sometimes I'm gonna lower the vibrato if I need to do so. I make sure that my transitions sound okay. Uh, and this is a danger when you want to straighten up the curve of segments. Like for example, if I take these up and I uh, straighten up the curve, I can actually do this from the left zone or straight on any uh, selected uh, segment. You go to the, uh, the center um, square icon and you bring that down. So let me uh, bring that to 100, like let's go with 83% and listen to how that sounds like. And you'll hear that effect. This won't take it very far. Okay, now I'm getting that T-Pain or share type of effect, which can be cool for a special effect on a pop song, but for what I'm doing, this is not what I want. Um, so that is the danger when we straighten up the, the curve of segments without paying attention to the transitions between different segments. I'm gonna go back one step, something I can do. Uh, I can just create a kind of a buffer zone uh, on the top corner of uh, a segment segment, a pitch segment, I have the set range for stringing pitch curve. So I'm going to bring the range a bit to the inside on both segments. So this will act as a buffer zone that will not be affected by the straightened curve uh, feature. Okay, so if we listen to the same thing again, let's bring that again to 80% um, or something. And it's still gonna sound funny, but you know, a bit more clean. Won't take it very far. Okay, I get less of that effect. Now I'm overdoing it, uh, but you know, if we do the same thing by bringing that curve a bit uh, less intense. Won't take it very far. Okay, it sounds more natural. And this can be very handy if you're in a situation where you need to straighten up the curve and you don't wanna get that kind of T-Pain effect. This is how you can do it with very audio. Now, something else I wanna show you, I have one part right here. Okay, so let's go with that long note, okay? And this is how I deal with long notes when pitch correcting. Okay, so that note starts a bit lower and then goes up in pitch the longer it gets. And the whole thing is a bit sharp, okay? So, and when I say sharp, it's above the note. When I say flat, it's just below the note, okay? So I wanna bring that, first of all, uh, to the, the notes. I'm just gonna bring it down and let's see how that sounds like. It's true for life. Now I need to go a step further and I'm gonna split that segment in several parts. And there you go. Now I'm gonna bring all the parts on pitch and listen to it again. If it's true for life. So that sounds way better. So let's do it before and after. I'm gonna select that whole segment. I'm gonna go down to choose function on the left zone and reset pitch changes for selection. And that will reset the whole thing to its original state. So that was before. If it's true for life. Okay, and that is after. So that sounds way better. I don't get any artifacts. I don't get any 
share or T-Pain effects, but I just get a very nice on-pitch vocal. So there you go, my friend. This is how I make vocal pitch correction sound natural. I hope that was helpful. Let me know if you have any comments or questions. Leave everything down below. Don't forget to share, to like, and to subscribe to this channel if you're not already. Until next time, take care and see you.